third time, not a charm. Today's third meeting between President Trump and bipartisan congressional leaders going so poorly so quickly, President Trump walked out just minutes after the meeting began. On day 19 of the federal government shutdown, we are seemingly no closer to any sort of compromise. The president just got up and walked out. Uh, he asked uh, Speaker Pelosi, will you agree to my wall? She said no. And he just got up and said, then we have nothing to discuss, and he just walked out. Again, we saw a temper tantrum. President Trump seeming to confirm some of that description in a tweet saying, quote, I ask what is going to happen in 30 days if I quickly open things up. Are you going to approve border security, which includes a wall or steel barrier? Nancy Pelosi said, no. I said, bye-bye. Vice President Pence followed the Democratic leaders, saying that the Democrats were unwilling to do any negotiating. CNN's Abby Phillip is at the White House. And Abby, it's almost as if last night's speeches never happened and we're just back to uh, dueling speeches moments ago from outside the White House. A few minutes ago when both Democrats first walked out 30 minutes after this meeting was supposed to start in the Situation Room gave their version of the story and then the vice president unprompted unannounced walks out as well to give their version basically where we are is that the Democrats and the Republicans are nowhere closer to uh, an agreement on this and in fact they may be as far away as they have ever been there is uh, a, a, in some ways a description being uh, being played out here by the Democrats of a president who angrily stomped out of the room and the White House is apparently very sensitive to that, sending the vice president out to dispute that description, saying clearly that the president did not angrily say anything to Nancy Pelosi. He didn't slam his hands uh, on the table, but they did confirm that he walked out. Uh, here's a little taste of the kind of back and forth we just got here on the White House front lawn a few minutes ago. The president seems to be insensitive to that. He thinks maybe they could just ask their father for more money, but they can't. The president calmly said, I guess you're still not wanting to deal with the problem. So there, the Democrats are, are being pretty clear. They don't want to have any conversations at all about the border or about the wall, about the wall until the government is funded. Uh, and, and the Republicans are saying that the president uh, will not reopen the government until he gets border security money. That being said, the president's offer to Nancy Pelosi in the Situation Room today was, if, you, uh, if, we, if I reopen the government right now, will you agree within the next 30 days to border security that includes a wall? Pelosi said no to that, but it's also not not the first time that offer has been made. In their last Situation Room meeting, the president made basically the same offer. Democrats rejected it then, too. So this was the second time around for that offer. And it's not surprising, Jake, that it was rejected by Democrats who've been saying from the very beginning they just want to fund the government as it currently stands. They do not want to uh, go into a protracted negotiation over a controversial wall that they, uh, their members don't support uh, and border security and a crisis that they don't also don't believe uh, is the way that the White House describes it, Jake. All right, Abby Phillip, thanks so much. Uh, let's talk about this all. Um, clearly, things have taken a horrific turn. It does seem as though uh, Nancy Pelosi is, is closing the door to any wall funding as part of any agreement. And I wonder, since there is some history for big comprehensive immigration reform, in, which included some wall funding or at least border security funding, uh, why she didn't just take that opportunity to say we would be willing to talk about anything if there were a big uh, immigration reform package. But right now we're focused on on uh, opening the government. I mean, I think this goes back to trust, but and, and because of both sides don't trust each other. Uh, there is no trust between any side of the of the different factions. And I'll tell you, being on the Hill today, they are dug in on either sides. Um, while the president's speech wasn't exactly a resounding success, it did rally, particularly House Republicans, where you had a lot of members waving, and some may still vote with Democrats, but talking to uh, them coming out of that meeting today, they were ready, they were ready to, you know, hunker down and for the shutdown to continue until they get what they want. I want you to take a listen to House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy just now speaking about how the meeting went. And the way they have displayed and their behavior is embarrassing to me. I tell the Democrats, get back into the room. Let's not leave. Let's solve this problem. Just as the president said, it doesn't even take 45 minutes. We're here and we want to work. Bill Crystal, your response? Yeah, I don't think we should necessarily take for granted that President Trump or the others are being entirely uh, honest and characterizing exactly what was said. Because I think your point is right. Look, there's an appropriations process. There will be a Homeland Security bill. The, that there will be amendments in order in committee and probably on the floor 
and they will get to vote on whether they want to have 5.7 billion for the wall or 1.6 billion or zero. Maybe Speaker Pelosi could have made that clearer to President Trump. He doesn't know a lot about how Congress works, but the Republicans do control the Senate. They can pass the 5.6 and send it over to the House. And so, I mean, the idea that he's not going to have a chance to make his case for his wall is ridiculous. And incidentally, he's had a chance to make his case for that for the last two years. And they could have even have tried to pass it on reconciliation, which only requires 50 votes, 51 votes, 50 plus the vice president. And they controlled, of course, the Senate. They could have done that, but they chose to go with tax reform and, other, and Obamacare on reconciliation. So the idea that he doesn't have a chance, that Republicans don't have a chance to get a vote on the wall or make a case for the wall unless the president shuts down a third of the government, is simply false. Well, it's also false, as you note. Uh, Noah Rothman, uh, the conservative uh, commentator, uh, did a long tweet about this. Um, it's false that Republicans are unified around the wall. I mean, maybe they are right now, this minute, but there have been two years in which Republicans have been all over the map about the wall. And in fact, a lot of border state uh, Republicans do not support the wall. Uh, a lot of border state Republicans don't support the wall because they realize what it's going to mean in terms of things like eminent domain. There are stories after stories of ranchers whose lands would be taken away, who would lose their livelihood, who would not have access to things like the river that they need in order to be able to ranch. I mean, talk to people like John Cornyn about this. But also, Republicans are not unified around this. We know that just in the U.S. Senate, there are at least three Republicans who have now publicly come out, Murkowski, Collins, and Gardner, and said we are ready to vote on reopening up the government. So there is no such unison in the Republican Party. And I think, look, I think it's up to Republicans. Donald Trump doesn't care what Democrats says. And he says, this is not political. Yes, it is political. It is so political that yesterday, hours before a, an address to Trump nation, he sent out a fundraising, a political fundraising request based on that address. Republicans have got to demand that the president of the United States not act like a 72-year-old man baby having tantrums in the Situation Room or Oval Office and come to the table and negotiate. And Paul, speaking of President Trump saying that the Republicans are totally unified uh, and, quote, there was no discussion about anything other than solidarity, which is what he said today, take a, a listen uh, to Republican Senator Susan Collins. Did any members raise any concerns? Thank you, guys. There was a vigorous discussion. Thanks so much. Did you raise any concerns? Really Susan Collins saying that she did raise uh, some concerns that she has, and we know that she wants to vote on opening the government a clean bill. And she is one of three Senate Republicans that have called, called for that. Uh, Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, Cory Gardner of Colorado, and Senator Collins. Right, and that's, that's the beginning, not the end, I think, of Republicans splitting off from the president. The wall's not terribly popular. Uh, the president says he wants a wall. By the way, I think he just got one. I think Nancy Pelosi is the wall. She told him no. Now, this is a, 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 a man, baby, as, as Anna says, who at age three, according to the New York Times, his father was giving him $200,000 a year in today's money. At age three, he was a millionaire. He was a rich man, a rich baby. And he's still a rich baby. But he's never before, I think, had someone look him in the eye, someone with equal power, look him in the eye and say no. Nancy Pelosi raised five children. Believe me, she knows how to say no. So um, President Trump today uh, saying he didn't want this fight at all. Take a listen. We really have to think about the people of our country. This is not a fight I wanted. I didn't want this fight. Okay. Now, of course, we know that the Senate, uh, controlled by Republicans, voted for a clean bill, uh, which funded the government and did not include border wall funding. Uh, and President Trump said, no, he's not going to sign it. Uh, and then this happened last month. I am proud to shut down the government for border security, Chuck, because the people of this country don't want criminals and people that have lots of problems and drugs pouring into our country. So I think it's clear, um, just on a factual basis, he does want this fight. Uh, he right. wants the politics of it. He wants the rallying of Republicans and rallying the base. He wants the changing of the subject from the fact that Paul Manafort shared campaign data uh, with uh, somebody with ties to Russian military intelligence. He, he does want it. Absolutely. This is what he thinks this is politically good for him. And he even said in an aside at one of those press conferences that this is really politically bad for Democrats. What is he going to run on <laughs> in 2020 if he doesn't have the wall to pound on um, to say, you know, is, is it finish the wall? 
Um, this really, he has seen this, this got him, this helped him get elected, and he sees this as a hill to die. This up. is nuts. It helped him in the primaries. There's, we've, there's a lot of data on this. The wall did not help him in the general election. It did not, not help Republicans in 2018. It is not going to, it's not helping him as we speak. About 60 percent. His numbers have slid, it, yeah. his numbers have slid a little bit over the last week. They're now at the lowest they've been since September. So, I mean, he can tell himself, I, I suppose, that my base is so idiotic that they think that this shutting down a third of the government over he's a saying $5 that people, billion. He's, no, he, is so, he, he has convinced himself also that people who are not getting paid right now are saying, that's okay, Mr. President. Do you think he's convinced himself? You keep you on think, keeping on. Well, I, that, that is I not, that is not more, happening in terms of the I feel it's more like do. desperation and that he knows he's losing and he doesn't know what to do. I, I actually think Jackie's right. I think she, he does convince him. I mean, I, I think he convinced himself. He has had conversations mm -hmm. With past presidents who have told them Maybe. they want a wall. I mean, yeah. obviously he is conversing with the paintings on the walls and things that are answering <laughs> back.